Well, hello. I didn't see you there. This is basically what it takes to make a movie. Solitude, art, what some call insanity. I've been locked in this room for 13 months editing. I haven't left. I've had birds bring me cigarettes. The carrier pigeon. Very common. I brought some with me from Lower Bavaria. I'm almost done. My director's cut. Hopefully it will be on the webs soon enough. And then God shall decide whether I should have been made in the films or whether there should have been a bullet in my head. That is all. You may call me Dieter. I'm here for the director's interview. Let's proceed. My grandfather was the best kind of man. The one 98% of people call a lunatic and 2% call a maniac. But inside the word maniac is genius. He was a bizarre man who basically studied filmmaking and so forth and set the drive in motion. He made the adult films back in the day before they were popular or considered to be legal and so forth. Technicolor was just invented. He did the first talkie pornographic film. And more importantly, he had sex with my grandmother, which made my father, which made me. I haven't personally seen a film that's been made since 1933. And that's why I think most directors today don't know how to make some movies because they watch all this new pop culture and lack a true understanding genesis of filmmaking. You would ask me the next question now. Well, technically I was entered when I exited my mother's womb. And I stayed there for 21 and a half years. It was part institute, part prison. Some call it the work camp. I call it the place where a child can be nurtured and learn how to be a man and how to make the films. What started as a work shed, became a chalet, became my great hall. Father was a weak man. Unfortunately, he squandered his life on booze and whores. And unlike most brilliant men, couldn't enjoy those two things and still make work. I do not let these things distract me. I let them enhance my drive. Now, I was told that as a child, I would always close my eyes when he came into Rome. And to be honest, I've never once looked upon his face. But I assume it is like mine, but lacking in the chiseled structure of my jaw. Because this denotes strength, something this man clearly lacked. Secrecy is a tricky thing, because the more people I tell, the less secret it becomes. I'll tell you this, though. I walk the world in a cloak, learning my way across Eastern Europe, basically in an opium-fueled rage I discovered what it truly meant to understand art and the more seedy side of society. We got a drifter. It made sense. It was a dangerous role to play. And at the same time, we needed someone whose life archetype matched that of the Joker. So we cast a drifter. Basically, we went to the train tracks looking for the most beautiful homeless man we could find. We found the rabbi dub who was easily six foot seven. We got him to play the part. He actually died halfway through filmmaking. So there's a few shots where we replaced him 
with other actors. And one time we just put Joker makeup on a small tree and did a scene on wide at poor focus. I do not recall if it made the final cut, but frankly it's my favorite work. The tree was stoic. It brought a real grounded energy to the role that no drift ever could. Speaking of the actor and stuntman and fight choreographer we had, Sheldon Trosco, I felt that the best way to get his best work from him was to not actually make him aware we were shooting a movie until we really needed his close-ups. So essentially, if there's continuity problems, it's because majority of what we got him to do, he was not aware of what he was doing, which made it expensive, of course, to have people around him, have people attack him, have situations go on in which we could capture him in his essence. This is what I did. Call it controversial, call it inspiring, call it bizarre. I guess you could call it a lot of things. Expensive, ridiculous, I call it organic. The clones was tricky. It was my first time ever actually casting anyone. So basically we had to put an ad out on the Craigslist looking for octuplets who could play the part. Having never actually done a audition process and having most of my roles either forced upon people or secretive or you know desperate men coming to me and asking for money and I said how about being a movie it was strange to try to gauge what is good and what is bad acting I don't measure acting and filmmaking in good and bad I measure it in how raw it is Basically, it was a night of drinking and ketamine, which was my two favorite things combined. And I said, why not combine my two favorite movies? The one where the man kills a bunch of American police officers, of course, would have to be a favorite. And the other, of course, the one where a crazy man kills a bunch of American police officers. So I combined the two films, loosely, based off real events, mixtures of every Batman movie I'd gotten my hands on, including the less known 1972 Batman film starring Rita Hayworth. It was a blast. A photograph of Lars von Trier. Not actually him as a person, but there's one photograph of him that looks really good. He's dressed up as Werner Herzog in it, and it just makes sense. My next film is an independently funded study on the life cycle of a large bird shot entirely inside a Buick. We are doing production in uh, Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. We found an old abandoned car lot and it is a perfect setting to tell the story. Afterwards I'll probably go into something a little less dramatic because it's a heavy, heavy topic. Perhaps some sort of comedy after that, maybe film something with, a, I don't know, an Autobahn von Bismarck biopic starring Rachel McAdams and done now. It depends if they're ready for my controversial ideas of filmmaking. But yes, I would very much like to work with the most talented and dramatic actor of the 21st century, Owen Wilson. I would love to put him in one of my movies. I would want to film a movie that starts with a baby and we watch him become a man. 
we watch him die for old age. But we get the same actor for everything. And we're going to have Owen Wilson play his father and his son. Which will be tricky because shooting in real time, it would take us 80 years to make. So it's tough to keep Owen Wilson looking at 10 all that time. But I'd make this movie and I would shoot it entirely in a dead language to show Matt Gibson that two can play his games. Myself, 13 years from now. I'd like to see what he's doing, if he's made three more movies than I have, and if my favorite color has changed. Only time will tell. get two more questions. There are rumors, rumors brewing abroad, you know, FBI this, Interpol that, two young wives here, ketamine induced psychosis there. Perhaps because some of my filmmaking ways are controversial. For instance, we threw three men to their death in the gorge. One time the camera wasn't even rolling which is good and bad. We miss the raw organic nature, but there's no evidence of crime. My point is it was an accident and I deny all claims the FBI could make about anything. And about the fact that I'm breeding large rare species of ocelot for fighting is outrageous. Clearly there are no ocelots from Eastern Europe so where would I get these things? Well, I may be outrageous, some say. I may be eccentric. But I'm not many other German stereotypes, so I'm not interested in what he has to say culturally about some peoples. That and I do not own a telephone because I find it distracts the brain from capturing life and freeing it on screen. At the end of the day, whether they love my movies or hate them, I trick them for maybe a minute or 20 or 13 years on just thinking and feeling. I always keep it loaded, except for one round. It is the ultimate form of roulette, and the ultimate game of decisive fate.